And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at thin provisioning. Thin provisioning allows you to present more logical storage to your clients than the underlying physical storage that you actually have. Instead of allocating space up front, storage space is dynamically allocated to each volume or LUN as data is written. So let's say we have a 10 terabytes aggregate and I'm going to create a 500 gigabytes volume in that aggregate and I'm going to write 100 megabytes of actual data into the volume. Well, if this was a thick provisioned volume, it would be reported in the aggregate as taking up the full 500 gigabytes worth of space. But if it is a thin provisioned volume, it's only gonna show up as taking up 100 megabytes of data in the aggregate, the actual amount of data that was written. Traditional provisioning pre-allocates storage, but thin provisioning provides storage on demand. This allows us to move from a just-in-case model to a just-in-time model when we're purchasing disks. Let's say that I'm the storage administrator at a company and the server team come to me, they're going to be deploying a new workload and they request 200 gigabytes worth of storage space for the server that this is going to run on. But I've dealt with this server team before and I know that they sometimes underestimate their storage requirements. And it can be a pain when this happens, we have to take the workload offline to add additional space. So I wanna make sure that I avoid that happening. So I'm going to actually provision 400 gigabytes worth of storage for them. I give myself a safety net there. But maybe on this particular storage system we are using, that's not available as an allocation unit size. The closest one is 500 gigabytes. So the server team requested 200 gigabytes, I end up provisioning 500 gigabytes of physical disk space. So 300 gigabytes there is paid for, but not actually being used, it's wasted. And even worse, real world, we're not gonna just have one server. Maybe we've got 10 servers like you see here. The same situation is happening on all of them. So we really required two terabytes of storage space, but we've ended up paying for five terabytes. That's disks that we had to pay for. So we've got the capital expenditure up front to buy them. And then they're also taking up rack space in our data center and need power and cooling. So we've got the operational expenses there as well. This is where thin provisioning comes in and we can get some great benefits here. We're looking at exactly the same situation again, but now rather than paying for five terabytes worth of physical space, I just create a two terabyte aggregate. And then in there, I'm gonna have 10 logical volumes, which are thin provisioned with a size of 500 gigabytes each. So as far as the clients are concerned, they've got that full 500 gigabytes worth of disk space, but rather than paying for five terabytes, I only pay for two terabytes. Let's consider how our flexible volumes work. In the example here, we've got a single aggregate, which has got three flexible volumes in it. Data on tap uses Waffle as the file system, the write anywhere file layout, meaning we don't have any fixed blocks on disk. Whenever a client write request comes in for any volume, it can be written to the next available block. We don't have fixed blocks for those different volumes. Now, thin and thick provisioning are not mutually exclusive with each other on the same aggregate. Back to that example we were talking about earlier, maybe two of the servers are mission critical and we want to make sure that they're definitely gonna have that full 500 gigabytes available to them. Well, in that case, in the same aggregate, we can make two 500 gigabyte thick provision volumes for those mission critical workloads our other eight volumes are gonna be 500 gigabytes thin provisioned. One terabytes worth of space will be pre-allocated to the two 500 gigabyte thick provisioned volumes. The other one terabyte that I have will be available on a first come first serve basis for those other eight volumes. 
Notice that with thin provisioning, it puts more onus on you, the storage administrator, to monitor your capacity usage. The thin provision clients here will see that they've got 500 gigabytes worth of disk space, but it's possible that we can run out of physical disk space before they actually get there. So the users are not going to be warning you ahead of time, hey, we're running out of space, can you please provision some more? You're going to need to monitor this more carefully yourself. Okay, as well as for volumes, we can also enable thin provisioning for LUNs. There's a potential issue with this, caused because hosts manage the file system themselves on their LUNs. As a result, the host in the storage may report the used space differently. Let's see how this works. So we've got a LUN in the example here. The client writes two files to the LUN and both consume 25% of the LUN space. The client will report 50% space used. The storage will also report 50% space used. Then the client writes a third file to the LUN. It consumes 25% of the LUN space as well. The client reports 75% space used. The storage also reports 75% space used. Now you're probably thinking, well, duh, of course, but this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Now the client deletes files one and two but it doesn't actually delete the blocks on the storage, it just marks them as being available to be overwritten. So the storage system doesn't know. The client reports 25% space used now, but the storage still reports 75% space used. Then the client writes a fourth file to the LUN. It's also 25% of the LUN space. The client will report 50% space used. The storage will now report 100% space used. And most hosts will end up using all of the space of the LUN like this. At this point, it will be the same as if you had thick provisioned it. You're not going to get any space savings. To resolve this problem, NetApp has space reclamation technology. Client-side software, such as SnapDrive and Snap Manager, can free up the blocks they're not using on the storage system, leading to space savings from the thin provisioning again.